Good morning, everybody. Uh, Brian Newbert here from GoldenBlack.com. In his car, I uh, got some time to kill before an appointment here in Indianapolis. Realized I owe you a video, a GoldenBlack.com Purdue Basketball Daily. Um, we are not even 24 hours removed, not even close to 24 hours removed from Purdue's season opening 98-45 to win over Samford. Uh, just figured I would uh, cut a quick little video here talking about Purdue's newcomers and the first impression they made, albeit in a game where uh, the opponent was obviously overmatched. Um, I think that all three of those guys who made their Purdue official Purdue debuts yesterday really showed that they can be meaningful parts of this team this year, if not difference makers. Uh, I think it starts with Lance Jones. I think Purdue opened up with an opponent that was going to put some backcourt pressure on Purdue, and I think Lance Jones' quickness in the open floor really, really was a game-changer for Purdue against an opponent like this. I like the way Lance Jones is able to just beat somebody one-on-one -on -one with his dribble. I didn't know he was as explosive a dribbler in the open floor as he showed he was last night. He showed at times at Arkansas he was. And I think he's just a real weapon against full court pressure. Um, you know, a lot of people talk about, you know, Purdue's presumed or perceived vulnerabilities against the press, to which I always respond that nobody looks good against the press. But for Purdue, you know, you don't see a lot of press in the Big Ten, but you do when you're up 15 points with five minutes to go. And I think Purdue can reasonably expect to be in that situation quite a bit this year because they're obviously really good and they're going to they're win a lot of games this year, uh, many of them one-sided. So I think it is important for them to be conditioned to handle backcourt pressure um, as much as possible. And I think Braden Smith, Lance Jones, and Fletcher Lawyer really give them a nice combination. Ethan Morton did some really positive things too last night, again, against an opponent that is not – does not represent enduring reality the rest of the season. So that's Lance Jones. I think he's going to be a really good player for Purdue defensively. I think he he's going to give them more offense than I think, you know, maybe uh, we might have expected. Um, just another guy who can give Purdue another gear offensively uh, from a tempo perspective. Somebody who can do some things in the open floor. He shot the ball pretty well um, to this point. I think that you know his volume is going to probably level off in time um, as we it gets deeper into the season. The opponents get better, the scouting reports get more detailed, things like that. But an excellent two-way addition uh, for Purdue here, and a player who I think we're going to look at here in a couple months as the perfect recruit at the perfect time for Purdue. They got everything they needed. Um, in that specific vacancy they had to fill through the transfer portal. So Lance Jones, first off. Second of all, Camden Heidi. I, I talked about him in my video last night. I wrote about him in the postgame analysis that I just think he's one of those guys who might be able to just come in and give you a lot of different stuff, a lot of different substance, simplicity, basic plays, physicality, rebounds the hell out of the ball. And when you consider that he's generally going to be playing against twos or threes or whatever the position may be who are are smaller than him. He's going to have a significant physical advantage on the glass. That can be a real extra asset for Purdue, which is already an outstanding rebound team, re rebounding team, as it should be. Um, makes an open shot. Uh, athleticism in the open floor. Uh, but just he just did what he needed to do in that game last night. Made the right passes, made the right decisions, driving from the corner. That corner, I'm telling you, is going to be a really important part of Purdue's offensive mix this season, whether it's Camden Heidi, whether it's Miles Colvin, whatever. Their decision-making on whether to pull and shoot, whether to drive, whether to pass, it's going to be really, really important to Purdue. And Camden Heidi, to this point in the season, has done a really nice job with that part of it. Obviously, uh, very small sample size to this point, but um, yeah, that. Uh, I'll, I'll have a more detailed review of the game later on our site at goldenblack.com. I'll kind of break down that little corner thing that I'm going to be obsessed with all season long. Um, and then Miles Colvin, obviously. I think Miles Colvin is the sort of guy who 
just has the ability to come in and just come in off the bench and just score and just give you that second team instant offense microwave for you 80s Pistons fans um, sort of score. You're going to see games this year where he's going to come in, play five minutes, and score seven points and change a game. You know, you might also see games where he comes in for six minutes and goes 0 for 5, and uh, you're going to have to uh, just kind of weather that. That's what you have to do with talent sometimes. He's going to make mistakes. Uh, all freshmen do, but he's also going to uh, flex those muscles at times too and uh, really, really uh, give Purdue a shot of offense off the bench at times. And uh, I, I just think... As he gets more and more experience, he becomes a guy who maybe becomes, I don't want to overstate this, but maybe a focal point type of guy on that second team. When you need scoring, you need somebody to make a shot for you that you can run a play for him, try to get him an open three, whatever, and uh, just get some offense. One of the stories of Purdue's season here, it's the reason Trey Kaufman ran is sort of being crowbarred into the four here. Uh, is that Purdue just wants needs more scoring options, needs more guys who can put the ball in the basket. And Miles Colvin is that guy straight out of central casting. You're going to have to live with his growing pains early in the season, but if you get him up to speed by the middle of the Big Ten season and obviously the NCAA tournament, you might have a real weapon coming off the bench for you here, and that's an unbelievable luxury to have. So that's kind of that's kind of the, the first impression here of Lance Jones, Camden, Heidi, and um, Miles Colvin, I guess Will Berg counts as well. I, I'm not really throwing him in the same bucket as those other guys. I love to put players in buckets. I, I don't know how I get them in the buckets, but they must be very large buckets. Anyway, I, I tend not to put him in the same category as other guys because I don't expect Will Berg to really play a rotational role this season. I, I don't think Purdue needs him to. They can essentially redshirt him again. But every time this guy plays... He seems to do more and more things to show you real promise. Uh, Purdue might really have something on its hands here that they can develop, that they can you know, continue to take their time with, and might have something down the line here. He moves well for a big guy following that surgery. He, he's finishing around the basket better than I ever thought he would. Uh, after that, the first time I saw him, I didn't think he'd ever played basketball before. He was so out of, out of shape you know, before coming over from Sweden to the U.S., and uh, just looked so raw. But he does really good things. He looks good shooting the ball. Uh, he looks good moving. He looks good rebounding. He just does a lot of positive things. And, you know, he's obviously a much more prospect than he is player. But you see some raw materi materials there that you just can't teach. And that Purdue, with an unbelievable track record with this stuff, you look at him as somebody Purdue might really be able to develop here, uh, you know, for the post Zach 80 years. Um, so... That's what I got. Uh, stay tuned to goldenblack.com all day. We'll have, uh, again, our upon further review from the game. We'll cut out some video clips. I'll try to keep it as simple as possible. I always, always do. So um, just stick with us here. We'll, we'll continue to have stuff throughout the week uh, on Purdue basketball and, and whatnot. And uh, be sure to, uh, if, if you haven't subscribed to our site, uh, now's a pretty good time. Uh, there's no bad time, if you ask me, but I am biased. So that's what I've got from the driver's side seat of my car here in Indianapolis. So this has been your GoldenBlack.com Purdue Basketball Daily. Uh, we will talk to you again tomorrow uh, about something at some point. So next game's Friday, so ha have some, have some air time to kill here. So thanks, everybody.